it's the Rossum Vegan Gal here and today I'm going to be doing one of my healthy living topics. And this one I call Top Herbs for Seasonal Health. But really, it's probably always the season to use some of these herbs that I'm going to be speaking about. And some I'll actually show you and uh, others I don't have the actual herb to show you but I can show you pictures. Some of this information I got from a magazine called Better Nutrition. It's their October 2015 issue. So I feel that this is an important topic. Now most herbs are actually food that you can that you might actually already be using and you don't even realize you're using them. Some are actually, you know, they're plants, some are leaves, some are berries. Some you may have growing in your garden and not even realizing that they're things that you could be using on a regular basis and that they have a lot of healing and health benefits to them. So, uh, so these are things that you want to consider. This time of the year is more the fall, winter time, but again, they can be used any time of the year in, in, my, in my opinion. So I'm going to go through some of them. So one of them they talk about here in the magazine is something called I think I'm pronouncing it right, Eli, Eli, or no, Eliu, Eliuthero, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put underneath this video the names of all of them so you'll be able to look them up, and this is a picture of it, what it looks like, I think it looks like more like a bark, so it's also known as Siberian ginseng, and it's been used for centuries in Russia and China, it's, it's used uh, for helping improve cognition, enhance energy, and support stress. It is part of a group of plants called adaptogens. It's been proven to augment resistance to stress both physically and mentally, and so that it helps you adapt more quickly. So in this time of year, when energy levels can kind of dip down, it's because the days are shorter. This might actually help uh, keep people more alert. And um, they've actually done a study in the International Journal of Phytotherapy and Phytopharmacology. I found a group of females taking a standard eye extract of this, you know, not the actual bark that I showed you, but an extract, that they um, improved attention and accuracy during stressful cognitive tasks. So most of the time this is taken in capsule or extract form. Most people don't do use the, the bark, I guess. The other way people might use it in, in, in uh, like Chinese medicine. Some people make uh, a, a liquid like they boil it and cook it and then take the liquid out. That's kind of an idea. Uh, another uh, herb is called sea buckthorn and it's more like a, I guess, a berry. And this is what it looks like too. I don't actually have it to show you. It's what it looks like. So, um, sea buckthorn is a plant that grows across the mountainous regions of Asia and Europe. And it's good for your skin. They make it out. They, they, the properties of it are found in both the seed and the oil, which contains a unique profile of the fatty acids 3, 6, 7, and 9, and are filled with vitamins, antioxidants, and flavonoids. Um, it's also a rich, it's a rich plant sort of the omega-7s, which are the palmitoleic acid. And it's been studied by more than 200 times. It's used mostly in cosmetics and skin products. And it could be applied topically or even added to a smoothie. So I guess you can get, I don't know where you can get the berries. Maybe you can get them dried. I've actually never seen them in any stores. So um, the next one is called elderberry. And that one you may have heard of. This is, again, what it looks like. I don't actually have them. You may actually have them growing. Some people might have them growing in their garden. And not even realize that they're elderberries. So uh, I have some other information here too. So elderberry is um, is a triple threat against the untimely colds because it provides antiviral and antibacterial uh, qualities, which are bolstering to the immune system. And it's a flowering shrub. It's actually a shrub. It's abundant in the United States and Canada, and has been used for centuries for uh, treating colds. Um, they also did a study in the Journal of Internal Medical Research revealed that patients with influenza-like symptoms who were given the elderberry syrup showed symptom relief four days earlier than those who received the placebo. And unlike many cold and flu treatments, elderberry has a sweet flavor that can be taken alone or added to drink to recipes. So that's interesting. So I don't know if you have them growing, but make sure, I'm just a disclaimer, things you might have growing or you see in the wild doesn't mean they necessarily should be picked or used. So be very careful because you don't know if it's poisonous or not. So better to check 
or if you know someone who knows about foraging or even your own garden, you don't want to just eat something if you don't know what it is. So be very careful about that. Uh, let's see, also about elderberry, uh, is, uh, it does support the immune function and body natural defense. It protects against, protects against cell damage with antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. So that's something you might want to consider this time of year. Something you may not know about it, the elderberry tree was sometimes called the tree of music. Because the Native Americans would use its branches to make flutes. How interesting is that? I never heard that before. Okay, uh, the next one. Let's see if I uh, want to say anything else about that. I think that's it. The next one. Find on my page here. Is uh, lemon balm. Now again, I don't have a lemon balm to show you, but you can you can buy it. Some people grow that in their garden. That's lemon balm. So lemon balm. Um, is a plant that has been documented all the way back to the Middle Ages as a treatment for restlessness and insomnia. A study in the Journal of Biobehavioral Medicine observed that subjects exposed to a stressor are also given a 600 milligram dose of lemon balm, rated their calmness significantly higher than those in a placebo group. Another study in England revealed that 1,600 doses of encapsulated dry leaf lemon balm resulted in reports of improved memory, mood memory, and serenity. And it's a member of the mint family, and it makes also a great tea, or, or taken in capsule form. Um, again, I just want to say a disclaimer. I'm not sure, like as far as they give you, they're giving dosages here in the magazine. Please consult with a medical practitioner. I take no um, responsibility if you take more of something than you really should. So I'm just saying that right out right now. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm just giving you the information. So make sure if there is something that might be a counter indicator to something you're already taking, if you're on medication or you have some kind of condition, you know, please do consult with someone first. Uh, also about lemon balm, um, it's a perennial herb. It's used for digestive problems, menstrual cramping, headaches, toothache, and mental health. It has a calming effect and is thought to possibly help with anxiety, insomnia, restlessness, ADHD, autoimmune problems, thyroid problems, rapid heartbeat from nervousness, and high blood pressure. Wow, so it really has a lot of benefits. And again, you can, you can get it actually as a leaf and make your own tea, or they might actually sell it as a lemon balm tea. Uh, next one is uh, turmeric, which I actually have that to show you here. Something to show you, the real turmeric. This is the actual turmeric root. You can also get it as a powder, and I do have the powder too. I can show you what that looks like. This is turmeric powder. So now the actual fresh herb will be more potent, um, you know, but they do make extracts out of it. They sell different products made with it. So we're going to talk about turmeric. So um, especially it's good for, for joint pain and soreness during the cold months. So curcumin is the orange juice compound that's found in the spice turmeric, one that's commonly used in Ayurvedic medicine for its powerful anti-inflammatory actions. And the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine found that a daily dose of 2 grams in people suffering from osteoarthritis resulted in reports of reduced pain and increased mobility. In addition, um, it's a powerful antioxidant, a brain health supporter, and strengthener of the vascular system by improving the lining of the blood vessels. It's also a member of the ginger family, and it tastes great. It can be infused in tea. Add it to recipe or take in capsule form. Now, it does have an interesting taste. So, I actually use the whole root in different things I make. I've used it in making my sauerkraut from higher antioxidants. I use it in cooking. But, the, the, even the powder, it does have a distinct taste. And even though they say it tastes great, some people might, you know, not uh, care for it as much. I, I actually am okay with it. So, you, you want to opt, if you're going to get the fresh root or find it, is start using it you know, on a small, small amounts. Now, when you use the fresh root, what's very interesting is the color comes off. It's a natural dye. Now, it's interesting because it can cross the blood-brain barrier, and they found, because Indian people eat a lot of curry, and the turmeric is used in curry, that it actually helps, you know, preserve the brain. They don't have as much, uh, I guess, brain, um, cognitive brain issues, you know, when they get older as other people do. Let's see, if they tell you any more here about turmeric, so I mentioned it fights inflammation. It also improves liver detoxification. And, um, and I already told you the curcumin is what gives it its orange a yellow color. And this is a picture here, an interesting picture. And I didn't show you the other one from the, um, 
the other one I wanted to show you, let's see, the elderberry. This is just a different picture you could see with the, with the leaves. So this is a picture of the uh, turmeric, and the root is at the bottom. It's just a pencil picture, so it's not a color picture. But if you could see that, I'll get up close. The root, the root by the roots is where you see the actual uh, plant. The roots, that's the leaves on top. So that's very interesting. The roots are, are down below. Okay, so next is uh, something called rhodiola. Now, it's also called arctic root because of the way it, 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 it thrives in the cold, mountainous regions of northern Europe. Rhodiola shows promise as a mood-supporting agent, um, especially seasonal affective disorder, which is common in the northern hemisphere uh, during the fall and winter months. Uh, pre preliminary research in animal trials have demonstrated that it increases the, quote, field of neurotransmitter serotonin, banishing those blues as it promotes the transport of important building blocks such as the 5-hydroxytryptophan, or 5-HTP. It's also part of the exclusive group of herbs known as adaptogens. We mentioned that before about the uh, Siberian ginseng, ginseng. And it can be taken as a capsule tincture or tea. And let me show you what that looks like. Here's a picture of it right here. You can get that in the light. That's what, that's what it looks like. So it looks more like a bark. So let me see if I have any more information about Roliola to share with you here. Um, nope. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next one. So the next one is astragalus. Now, astragalus is a, a Chinese a herb in the Chinese, Chinese medicine, and it helps to prevent cold and improve energy. The Journal of Immunology revealed that it might also be an effective anti-aging tool. Two constituents of astragalus are called cycloastradinol and astragalosi, and they play a role in extending the lifespan of our DNA. So how does it do that? DNA molecule is called a telomere, protects the chromosome material from breaking down, but as we age, the telomeres shorten, can shorten. There are, there are associations between shortened telomeres and age-related disease, such as osteoporosis, dementia, and arthritis. Astragalus shows promise as an effective anti-aging tool that can preserve the length of telomeres and perhaps decrease the risk of age-related disease. The root has a mild, uh, yet sweet flavor and can be infused into a tea, added to a soup, or taken in capsule tincture form. Again, it looks like a more like a bark or a root, and that's what it looks like. It's, you know, in a cut-up form. So let's see if I have any more information about astragalus to tell you here. Um, I don't hear. There's another paper I wanted to just check to see if I have anything else to tell you. No? Okay, so we'll go on to the next one. The next one is dandelion. Now, dandelion greens you will see growing wild. Now, what's interesting with them is when they get very big, they're tougher. And there's different kinds of them, I've noticed. Um, the, the shapes are a little bit different. So if you ever see in your garden, and of course your garden's not sprayed with any pesticides or anything if you're away from that, um, try to pick some and eat them. They are a little more bitter, and you can eat the flowers too. But the younger they are, if they're still in the young phase, they're not so mature, uh, they'll probably taste better. So dandelion is, is used a lot for detoxification. It's often considered a weed, but this herb has been documented as far back as the 2nd century AD as a powerful cleansing agent. It is regarded as a liver and kidney tonic in traditional medicine and has often been used to improve digestion. Um, encouraging preliminary studies suggest that it can also have a liver protective properties. You can add the leaves to your salad and brew the root and, and leaves into a tea. So there is a root below that you can actually brew. So um, it does, it is known for liver detoxification. And, you know, if, if you find it too bitter, you know, add other things to it. Make a citrusy type of a dressing, other vegetables in there, and it's pretty good. So let's see if I have anything more to tell you about dandelion here. Uh, let me just check one second. Um, no, okay, go on to the next one. So, let's see. The next one is fennel seeds, and that I actually have to show you. And I'll also show you a picture of what the fennel uh, root looks like, because you can eat fennel. That they do sell in stores. That's fennel. And it has usually a taller leaves and like little kind of, uh, almost it looks like dill. Little. So let me show you what the fennel seed looks like. And I have it in a bag here. I buy it at the health food store. And I can just take out a seed, and maybe I'll chew on one. So this is what they look like, if I can get it in my, between my fingers. You can see that, and if you can, I can get closer, there we go, you see that's a fennel seed, and I'm going to chew on one right now. And it has a licorice type of a flavor, which I actually like. So, fennel is good for calming your stomach, 
Uh, so, especially when you eat foods that are a little more decadent uh, and it can cause upset stomach. So fennel seeds are classified as a carminative herb which can prevent unwanted gas and bloating. The Journal of Alternative Therapies in Health and Medicine revealed in a recent study that fennel seed oil significantly decreases gas and bloating compared to a placebo. These tasty seeds are also a great source of fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants such as quercetin uh, and caimferol. Never heard of that one before. As a bonus, they also act as a breath freshener. And they are. They, are, they do have kind of a licorice type flavor. Same thing if you use the actual um, vegetable. And you can add, it says add one teaspoon of fennel seeds to a cup of hot water and let it brew for five minutes. Or try them raw when you're on the go. Okay, just chewed on one. And they're easy to chew. They're not hard. So fennel seeds. Now that's a good one. Again, you might have a lot of these already in your home. So fennel seeds. That's all on fennel seeds. Next one is ginger. And I do have more to share about ginger here. So ginger root, I do not have the root to show you. Um, but it looks similar to the turmeric, except it has more of a yellowish color. But here's a picture of it already cut. You see the yellowish color and there's a skin on it? That's what it looks like. So uh, a ginger is known to be warming. Um, it's the best medicine by, to have, to have uh, a cup of ginger tea warm, you know, warming to the body. It's a popular remedy excuse me, since ancient times for a diverse range of ailments, including motion sickness, nausea, migraines, indigestion, sore throat, sore throat and even arthritis. Now, I, in the past, um, in some of my study days, we do something called a ginger compress. And it involves a lot of ginger, grate it, and put it in a, a little um, a cheesecloth bag and squeeze it in the water. And then, you and then you take towels and then you dunk them in there. And it's a whole process. I, I don't go by what I'm saying. You have to really know the right process. But just to give you an overview. And then you would place the hot towels wrung out on the person's, directly on their skin, and then cover that up with another towel, and then as it cools, you keep switching to different towels back and forth. And the skin, it would warm up the skin and improve circulation because the skin would start turning pink, and it feels really good. Um, and it would help a lot. So it is great, a winter herb for promote circulation, which I just said, within the body, which can create a warming sensation. It is thought that an active compound in ginger called gingerol is responsible for that cozy feeling by stimulating blood flow and relaxing blood vessels. So that's why the skin turns pink when you put it, when you do this ginger compress. To get toasty fast, here it's giving you a little recipe, boil three cups of water, add several slices of fresh ginger, around three ounces, and a hint of honey. I actually don't use honey, they mention it here, I would use coconut nectar, uh, or something like that, or stevia, which some people call stevia, but it's stevia, and then steep for five minutes and enjoy this on a chilly day. So more to tell you about ginger. Um, Let's see, I already said it helps digestion, stomach distress. Um, so, it's an uh, interesting fact is to treat digestive issues, the Greeks would eat ginger wrapped in bread. Eventually, ginger was added to the dough, creating gingerbread, but they actually wrapped it in bread, so that's very interesting. And a little more about ginger, let's see. It's a strong antioxidant capacity, it's potent antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, and antiparasitic qualities. While protecting the body's stores of glutathione, which is the master detoxifier of the immune system to support immune health. So that's good information, too. So a couple of other herbs that I want to mention that weren't on their list. So there's something called echinacea. Now, I don't have a, a picture. It's, it's more of a, it's a, like a cone flower, and it has like a pinkish color. This is just a picture, uh, a, a pencil picture. But echinacea, a lot of people know about it because it's used for... Uh, common cold and flu symptoms, and also stimulates immune function to help the body fight infections. So, um, you know, you can buy it in, you know, liquid or capsule form. You might even want to plant the flowers and, you know, make your own, you know, solution like tea from it. I don't know how that works. You'd have to look that up more. But that's used a lot around this time of year. And I heard that with echinacea, your body can go through a point where it doesn't work anymore, like you should go on and off it. I don't know for sure. Again, consult with your practitioner to find out more for yourself, you know, what's going to work. Because sometimes you don't want to self-diagnose and self-medicate and just buy it at the health food store. You want to go to someone who can really uh, give you the right information, what you need to use. Um, so echinacea, it's interesting. The Greeks, it derives from the Greek, Greek term echinos, meaning hedgehog 
The prickly scales in its large conical seed head resemble the spines of an angry hedgehog. That's how they got the name. Interesting. Uh, let's see. What else? Also, something called ashwagandha, which again, I don't have um, a color picture, but this is what it looks like here in that picture there. So ashwagandha helps reduce the effects of stress, anxiety, and mild depression. It also boosts memory and improves mental function. It's a, as a botanical, it is part of the Solanaceae family and related to other plants such as goji berries and tomatoes. That's interesting, I never knew that. A couple of other things, so also by ashwagandha, it's used in Ayurvedic medicine, so you might not have heard of it if you don't know about Ayurvedic medicine. It's an adaptogenic herb that helps to restore balance to the body. It includes supporting a healthy stress response, immune system, and inflammation levels, as well as mood and memory. And I did mention that. Um, something called Butterbur, you may never have heard of this, but here I have a little picture of it. This is from a different magazine. It's, if you can see that, that's it, that's Butterbur. Um, Butterbur is, has been used for 2,000 years, it says, for upset stomach, migraines, other headaches, coughs, allergies, asthma, hay fever, relieving spasms, supporting health, inflammation, a relief for anxiety, insomnia, and many more that they don't list here, so that's interesting too. Holy Basil! It's also known as Tulsi, and here's a picture of it too. So you may know about basil, but this is a different type of a basil. That's, that's what it looks like. Um, it's, it can soothe stress, promote blood sugar balance, immune system support, gastrointestinal health, anti-aging, antioxidant power, heart health, joint health, cellular health, adrenal support, hormone and reproductive equilibrium, and many more. It is an antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antiviral. So you may want to go out and get some of these things. And I know you can get holy basil tea. There's a company, I think they're called Organic India. They, they make a tea with holy basil. Uh, parsley, that I can actually show you. I think most people are familiar with what parsley looks like. But just in case you're not, I have some uh, Italian leaf parsley, which I really like. And I just have that to show you. This is my beautiful, fresh Italian leaf parsley. Parsley, so you can see how nice that looks. Nice and fresh. Now you want to make sure it is good and fresh. And if you grow it in your in your own garden, that's even nicer because then you could just pick the uh, ones you like, uh, the amounts you want, and not have to worry about it starting to deteriorate. You know, because it does start to yellow after a while. But I do wrap it. That's that's what helps a little bit keep it wet. So parsley is known as Petrocillinum crispum. Interesting, I never knew that. Um, the other ones I didn't give you their like Latin name, you know, or what they call them. But so it's an annual Mediterranean herb, and has been used as an expectorant and antimicrobial. Antimicrobial. Excuse me, I'm running into my words are running together. Uh, diuretic, hypotensive, and laxative, and also to address anemia and arthritis. Interesting, I never knew that. Then oregano, which I do not have. Again, I have a picture of it over here. Here's oregano. It's just in a, in a bucket there. I don't know if you can see that. But oregano is a lot, of, a lot of times used to make, like, pizza. People use oregano and pizza a lot. It's a Mediterranean spice. It masquerades as an herb. So it's not actually an herb. It's an actual spice. Oregano has strong phenol antioxidants that can wipe out bad bacteria, viruses, and yeast. Oregano is a powerhouse antioxidant and ranked highly by the USDA. It's an antioxidant potential between... 3 to 20 times higher than any herb. I never knew that. But not everyone likes oregano. It does have a stronger flavor. So if it doesn't work for you, you know, there's, I, I gave you many choices here and many interesting uh, options for things that you could look into getting. And again, you may have some of them already in your home. If not, you may want to keep them because some of these things will hold up for a long time, like ginger root, turmeric root, um, they, they are, since they're roots, they don't uh, go bad as quickly as things like parsley, you know, and then other things, other products might want to get in their extract form or capsule form or liquid form. So those, again, have a longer shelf life. So I just thought that this was something important for people to know and so that they can uh, look into other options for keeping themselves healthy instead of, use, you know, use, use food as medicine or herbs and spices as medicine instead of opting for something that's chemically produced. So the more natural you can go, the better for your body because you're feeding it. You're feeding it what it needs. So I wanted to uh, share that information and I hope you enjoyed this video and I thank you for watching. It's the Rossum Vegan Gal.